If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. We go really high. Pump. And then we bring you low. Oh, you just woke up, Arlo. For oh, the man. first 48 minutes of the intro. Holy smokes. Current events of the conversation. Listen to Sal's incredible transitions. We talk about the death yes. of Snapchat. It's dying. It, it is. is. We talk about DoorDash. All from a Kardashian. The gig economy. What is that? Justin brings up furries. Yep. Yeah, you know, they're a topic. One of his hobbies. We yeah. do. Uh, we talk about Weight Watchers. That's when I do my smooth transition. Yeah, we said some nice things about these guys. Adam does the worst Four Sigmatic mention of all time. Four Sigmatic has <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. got, yeah. got Hey, sales are up, bro. Are yeah. up. <laughs> I just got <laughs> the report, man. Sales works. are up. Four I Sigmatic. Can, I can tell you how shitty they taste, but they like still sell them. Like negative, positive. They must be fucking working. They do work. They work. And Four Sigmatic products are dual extracted, very effective mushroom-based products. We are affiliated with them. So if you go to foursigmatic.com forward slash mind pump, Enter the code Mind Pump, you will get a discount at checkout. We also talk about cannabis and brain cancer. Mm. We talk about Trump's new tariff on steel and aluminum. Moron. And then we also do a Thrive Market unboxing. A lot of bone broth on this one. Yes. Uh, oh my god. We yeah, are affiliated bone with bone Thrive Market on also. On bone broth. If you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump, you will get one month free membership, twenty dollars off your first three orders of forty nine dollars or more. And free shipping. If you guys would have to say, if you guys would have to pick one of our sponsors as your all-time favorite, who would you say is yours? Whoa, that's a lot of pressure. That's a that's a tough one. Yeah. Uh, mm. You know, I really like Thrive Market. One, two, three, Thrive. I it's like just, Thrive Market uh, a lot. So do I. I just yeah. like what they stand for. I yeah, like what they stand yeah. for. I like what they provide. I think it's an incredible. It's service. a lot of variety in their products and stuff. And well, they just, just do. They go the extra mile to really kind of like. They might be one we keep for a lot longer yeah. than anybody else. Yeah, but mm. I do like. Yeah, I do like the people that are Organifi too. They're really really nice to us. Really yeah. cool. No, they've always been They're solid right. too. Nice. But I mean, I, I think Thrive's one for me. Organifi is a close two. Yeah. Yeah. So then we get into the questions. The first question was, uh, do we have any tips on how to outgrow people gracefully? Now, I don't think they're talking about bicep growth. I think they're talking about personal growth. What do you do when you grow and the friends around you don't? How do you break up with your friends? Find out in this episode. Hmm. The next question was, take them to dinner. How many times per week should women hit each muscle group? Is it different than it is for men? This is an interesting to topic that we cover. Uh, the answers may surprise you. The next question was, do we think food sensitivities play a role in fat loss? In other words, let's say your calories are good, your macros are good, but you're eating a bunch of foods that you have intolerances to. Can that prevent you or slow you down from losing body fat? And finally, the last question, how do we define failure? Now, they, made, they might have been talking about Momentary muscular failure, failure with weights. <laughs> if that's but the we, case, we we went way off. Track. We went in the other direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, we talked about. We didn't answer correctly. Yeah. I didn't think about that until after we got going. I thought, uh, wait a second. They might have been talking about that. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. It's like two yeah. two reps short yeah. of failure. Well, when, what is failure? Yeah, when you're lifting weights and you can't uh, lift it when anymore. You, yeah, when with you, good form. Yeah. Okay, there's the answer there. Fine. But yeah. In the episode, we talk about other types of failure and how we define failure there. Also, this month. Would you like to get free access? What? I would, Sal. To the Mind Pump private forum. Oh my free? God. Free. What? How would you like to get free access to the forum? All you got to do is go to mindpumpmedia.com and enroll in one of our MAPS exercise fitness bundles. Enroll in any of them. Pick one that's right for you. Sexy athlete bundle, the build your butt bundle. Um, we have the, uh, what do we have? The prime bundle. Check out our bundles, which combine two or more MAPS programs. Of course, the most popular one being the Super Bundle, which is one year of exercise programming. It is most of our MAPS programs put together and discounted. Enroll in any of those. You get access to our forum where you have trainers, doctors, celebrity <laughs> fitness enthusiasts, oh. allergies. <laughs> uh, you have sneeze. Adam, <laughs> myself, and Justin in there answering questions. It's a great community. Normally, it costs, I think, $97 uh, you get access for free if you enroll in a bundle this month only. Find out at mindpumpmedia.com. You know what, dude? Here's uh, what I think. Here's what I think. I think 
This is a clusterfuck, you guys. I'm just going to say it. Oh. <laughs> so I shouldn't have kids, huh? It's no, just... I'm going to push Katrina down If you stairs. do, have a, have a, have a, like a full-time... Nanny. That's what I'm trying to get. Someone that manages the whole I'm thing. I'm trying to get so much money that yeah. I have a full-time well, live-in... Where's the fucking boat of money? Nanny yeah, then and Then I chef. can handle this stuff. That's my goal. That's why I keep trying to tell Katrina. She just gets mad at me because I'm working all the time. I'm like, listen, woman. <laughs> if you want something to take care of our kid, fold the laundry and cook for us all the time, like, let if me you, do this. If you ever if right. you ever want your girl to stop listening to you, the way you start a sentence is, <laughs> listen, listen, woman. Listen, woman. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen here, woman. It oh. always ends up poorly. Yeah, I never, it never. It, it never, doesn't go my way when I talk uh, that way. It never, doesn't go that never way. Never works that well, mm. dude. I got two, always start with honey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, permission to speak. I got two messages from. Uh, so you know how in the, uh, one of our recent podcasts I speculated that if you have like inflamed gums or they bleed or whatever, that could contribute to food intolerances. Right. Right. Yeah. I got a message from a dentist. An MD? A dentist who wrote me and he's like, this is exactly what we're researching right now. Oh, really? Yes. In fact, somebody wrote a book on it. And then I got a message from an gas- a gastroenterologist mm. who said, absolutely, this is something that we're looking into and we think this is the case. Yeah. Your Salstradamus. So, so, so brilliant. Salstradamus. Yeah. <laughs> he or, comes up with theories uh, that usually pan out. Or, or and sometimes they don't. Here's what I think. What I <laughs> and think then he is he blames it on Justin and Adam. He, <laughs> he denies those ones yeah. heavily. Yeah, remember that dumb idea, the one that Adam yeah. had? Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> if, if it doesn't work out, <laughs> that's we, right. I'm the yeah. fall guy. Yeah, you know what? Happens, you, you or me? That here's the other Adam's option. Idea, right? Here's the other yeah. option. I'm thinking like, wow, that's crazy that I came up with that. And then I think to myself like, what if I read? An article about that. I forgot. <laughs> just like stayed in there. All and, I remembered was yeah. that that happened. It's you know? probably that's what, happened to me before. That's probably <laughs> the truth. Like, that oh my really god, I'm so brilliant. Do you, like, oh yeah, I read speaking that. Speaking of things that we brought up on the podcast recently, so I brought up Snapchat. Did you guys hear the fall of Snapchat? Yeah, their stock dropped. One point, yeah. one point three billion. Do you know why? So I, I Kylie, what's Kylie the Jenner, reason? Kylie Jenner tweeted that nobody uses them anymore. Yes, that's <laughs> the reason, bro. Get the fuck out of here. So I, I, I think I told you guys. I don't That's know if I said this power. I don't remember, but I was talking to Bradley Martin. He told me his his Snapchat views went from 50,000 that people to 5,000 5, yeah. overnight. I, I don't think it was her that did it. I think she just, I mean. Why? I don't think she She's dropped. one of the most influential people right now. I know yeah. that, but they changed the algorithms or something. So no, that's what I thought. That was my speculation. Well, that's why she said that. You know what I'm saying? I bet you she's no, like, no, no, no. She, she said it. Her statement was, "Does anybody, anybody even? Ever, yeah, does anybody even still Snapchat anymore?" Yeah. Well, I feel like too. She's saying what a lot of people were inherently thinking, but yeah, they were brother. still had it. You know. Well, they, so here's the thing that I trip on is that why haven't these companies figured this out? And you see this in the shoe game where you're starting to get these these shoe companies that are attaching themselves to influencers. Right. Why are not these tech companies figuring the same piece out too? Well, like, some of them have. I mean, so you like you mentioned the Kardashians. Like, have you seen like like Kim's stupid app? Like, it that's worth almost more than anything else she's done. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. It's, no, I haven't. Oh, hundreds of millions of dollars. What she is made it? off of some stupid ass app? That I don't know. It's just like her shopping or something. I have no fucking <laughs> idea. Dude. It's it's horrible. God. But people like. But it just shows you how much influence they have, right? I mean, huge, that's, that's huge. A, that's a big deal. If somebody can co- imagine how scary that is for an app company. Yeah, that gets huge, right? Yeah, they can just talk bad about it, and then well, this goes back to that book, Hitmakers, that that Tom turned me on to back when about how important that the the this whole virability that everyone talks about. It's like really, it's not viral, and it's not like that. It's that somebody of major influence has put millions of people onto it, and so right. then it seems like it explodes, and then. If you have four or five people that have millions of people attached to them, you have this huge. Well, like, look at that. You know what? What Joe Rogan did. Yeah, Vero. Vero. Right. Like uh, just for that reason alone, I saw him. And I was like, oh, and I checked it out, and then I was like, oh, so this is legitimate. You know, otherwise, I probably wouldn't even have paid attention to it. I'm really interested to see. I wonder if he got paid to do that. I don't. I don't know. I don't, I don't think know. so. You know, it, I mean, he's a smart business guy. I mean, I'm sure he's. Yeah, but why would he out of nowhere be like, hey, everybody, check out him. this new social media? Yeah. Well, I think everybody likes likes the idea of it. It's really targeted towards our generation. It's yeah. not targeted towards cleaner the cleaner young- interface. I mean, it's it's kind of time for a, a fresh update. Did so I read, read a whole I read an article on it, right? And what they talk about is that 
you know, it's really targeted towards the businessman and woman and our our age group because you have mm. this ability to separate your your friends, your acquaintances, and then your and then your family, right? So, I think it. it I mean, if I had, if we had Vero, if that if this thing is, goes where it's at, I would have rather had that than Instagram for the simple fact that I would be able to separate my business and personal life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would be. I would. I would be more like you see me now. I rarely share any of my you know, family and very close friends and even Katrina, where if I was able to share that with all my close friends and family, I totally would. I would yeah. post my friends and I would post, you know, pictures of my cousins and family and stuff like that if yeah. it, I knew that I could keep it to just... Oh, my- what's brilliant about that is now you cut out Facebook too, right? Because like Facebook is where I usually like interact with family members. I don't do it on Instagram. So now if you have like something like that where it's a platform where I could sort of siphon off like which uh group i'm talking to that way like uh, i mean i could just use one one place for everything so here's a here's another cool one that's going on right now that i'm really fascinated with that squeaking people by the way are- <laughs> they thought they thought it was my dog yeah. i was like Did no they? you would know uh, you need to tell the audience you got your puppy yeah right i got now. my puppy he's he's uh, just a ball of energy and uh so yeah we I, we got him in studio it today. wasn't my squeaky shoes that was no, making no, that sound no, no. he's 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 having out his toy so a company called softbank invested in doordash and doordash is now valued at 1.4 billion and they and the same company had, had already acquired some shares in uh, Uber Eats, so they're making a huge play right now on this space. It's fucking brilliant because you're we all see these DoorDash type of companies that are uh, popping up everywhere, but even so, uh, only only five percent is uh, of our food is ordered online through these things. So the theory is that this is going to grow to twenty five percent or potentially more people as it become more aware more accessible i think it would i think i uh, would totally support that 100 mm-hmm. oh, i mean yeah how big was delivery for pizza right De- like yeah. like delivery for p like it made pizza mm-hmm. one of the, the the biggest foods in america because they would deliver oh just because of that how just many, because how many that. times as a kid growing up at least i know that my family ordered pizza just for the simple fact that it was going to get delivered to now the and the problem is if you're a restaurant because a lot of restaurants will, you know, when pizza started getting really popular with delivery, other companies, other restaurants looked into that, but the, the logistics and the cost of it just didn't make sense. The cool thing about this is if you're a restaurant, you don't have to invest in any of it. Right. So you automatically now can right. reach out to a, a larger audience by yeah. having, mm-hmm. you know, other a middleman or whatever, pick up your food and deliver it. Yeah. So, I, I mean, we're going to see more of this, uh, more of this happening. That's the gig economy, they call it. The gig, most of the jobs, yeah, most of the jobs added uh, to our economy are now gig economy type jobs, where it's like people kind of work for themselves, but they kind of don't, you know, because mm. they either deliver food or they drive Uber or mm. you know mm. they rent out their home with Airbnb or whatever. Like this is the new, you know, it's creating entre- more entrepreneurial spirit out of you know this new <laughs> generation coming up more so than when we were kids for sure. Because the barriers to enter that are very small. Like if you want to, dude. If I was a when I first had my, my car as a teenager, tell me you wouldn't have done that. Oh, I would have Ubered the fuck. Are you kidding me? I would be what's, like, what's the age restriction to that? I don't that, know. That's that seems kind of like I wouldn't want an Uber driver that's like sixteen or seventeen. I'd be yeah. like, uh, I'm out of here, dude. <laughs> yeah. No, I think yeah. it, I uh, I don't think it's legal in some states anyway. It's, pro- right? it's probably got to be eighteen, and then yeah. yeah, some states still are yeah. fighting it, so it's not everywhere. Oh, I would have been that's a, a good great... question, Justin. I don't yeah. know what I don't know what Uber. Dude, if you're a college uh-huh. kid and you're I don't know how, you're right. It's a good question because if you're old enough to do that and you're going to school, it feels like a perfect job. I would have loved that. Yeah, because I mean, I'd, I'd I would I would have sucked to get lost. All yeah, time. yeah. Because well, think how many of your your peers at your college would be picking up rides from you. You know what I'm saying? You'd Dude, be I used to valet cars. I mean, that was my easy job that I did while I was in college. And dude, if I would have just had one car, just shuttling people around, right? I don't know After it. all the fraternity parties, everyone's drunk. And oh stuff yeah, like that. yeah. I mean, it, it's it's you know one of the things cool is besides the the money side of it too is I believe like uh, drinking and driving is down at significantly because of that yeah, yeah. that's uh, fucking that makes ra- a lot of sense that's yeah. so rad when you think about that it's like in the past it was this oh I gotta drive home or this or that because you didn't want you were worried about your car but it's like man it's so easy now to Uber from anywhere mm-hmm. that I mean it just eliminates so that it's 21 I just looked it up 21 is the age oh it is 21 yeah 21 but um, so you're, you're, <laughs> have you heard about people calling Ubers instead of ambulances yes to get what? them to the hospital Oh, yeah. uh, that yeah, that uh, again. Dude, like, could you imagine some, you roll up your Uber and some dude's like, you know, how expensive. Shot, shot in the shot in the side. He's yeah. bleeding out. 
Could you give me to the ER, man? I can't afford it. <laughs> I can't afford the fucking ambulance. Oh my god. Well, I mean, it makes sense because an ambulance costs oh, how much? A gajillion dollars. How much do you want to bet that we're going to start seeing <coughs> medical st- style pickups that are kind of like demand. ambulances, but are like yeah. like control through Uber? Of course. How much do you want to bet? Of course, because they're even looking at the luxury, like you know, limo type services too. So it's like why would you services. why wouldn't you contract a nurse out who could to typically or who could uh, potentially be someone who could handle somebody and keep them safe, like a first get, responder? Yeah, yeah, a first responder, the person who's got the certifications, has the experience. Or, you pay right. you pay them some sort of a percentage of the ride. Yeah, or your own the, little crash cart, right, yeah. dude? That's it. Uh, I, I I think this is going to get hilarious. It, it's weird. How yeah. many jobs are going to be? Because it's everything. Changed. Everything is so regulated. If you look at that, like you know, oh, with ambulances and you know, that's why it costs so much. Yeah, does, it doesn't make any sense that an ambulance picks you up and takes you to the yeah. hospital. And it costs well, you kind of like want it to be grand. sterile. You know what I mean? But <laughs> then again, like I'll give you like a poor like rating. You know, you get two stars. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I got I got sepsis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you get like gangrene because of some fucking Uber driver yeah. was trying to like you perform know what, though, surgery were, on you. If that were to happen, it'd be the last time he gets away with it. You know yeah, <laughs> he's, 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 you lost your job, yeah. buddy. He was yeah. Yeah, well, you lost your leg. I thought you he know? was giving me CPR, but then I felt tongue. Listen, oh, oh, <laughs> shit. Not right, like, uh, wrong. Yeah, I know. So uh, I, I read an. <laughs> I read an article the other day that cracked me up. I saved it here. Let me pull it up here for you guys. So there's a, I'm going to read a term to you and you guys have to guess what it is. So there's something called, God, what is the name of it? I got to find it. This is uh, uh, eproctophilia. <laughs> eproctophilia. Do you know what that is? It sounds well, that like sounds like a sexual sounds bacteria. Like anally. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are pretty fucking close. Mm. Right. You're very close. Eproctophilia is fart fetishism. Wow. So these are, wow. There's people that love we to be farted right. on? Yeah. These are people that pay money wow. for other people to fart on them. Oh, I'll do that for free for or you. Or fart oh, wow. on their like or on their faces. Again, my brother would have made a lot of money. Yeah. So <laughs> he could do it on command. Yeah. So uh people pay a lot of money to do this apparently. Wow. I didn't know this was a, a thing. Mm. You know, like they like, I, get blasted in the face, or yeah, like, like they the... get they get. They'll... See, I just I have I don't understand why kids these days complain about finding a job. Like it's so easy to find a job <laughs> if I, you I, can fart. Right, you got a job. Marsh or muscle worship, right? If you can, uh, if you got some muscles, you can flex online for somebody. You can fart yeah. in someone's face. Yeah, you can Uber drive them somewhere. Yeah, drive a car. I mean, come on, man. To, we to live in a great time room. right now. Yeah. How fuck? It's not hard to make some money, man. No, there's opportunities everywhere. Stop being lazy, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I, get out there and fart on someone's face. What, what's wrong? <laughs> what's wrong with uh, what's wrong with like humans are so complex that we do such weird. Yeah, like I don't know. It's like you know what I find the- what I find fascinating is that it's uh, you know twenty years ago this type of stuff wouldn't exist because the, these weirdos are spread out. They all couldn't over. find each other. Yeah, they oh. couldn't find each other. But now that there's you know, there. Hey, there's probably a thousand Dude, of these weirdos. There's furrier conventions, all, right, all over the like United conventions. States. Conventions. I'm like, there's that many of you. Yeah. You know? Is there really that many furries? Yeah. yeah. Dude, I I, I told you guys, I, I ran it. Like some reason, they're always in Santa Cruz. You know, <laughs> and so I'm walking. What do you there. mean for some reason? That's like the the home of weird people. Yeah. No, that's what I love about Santa Cruz, <laughs> yeah, exactly. though. Like, for just people watching purposes, like, we used to just plop down on a bench and just watch people. But, yeah, I just, I've seen so many furriers come through there. Furriers? Like, it sounds it's like, a, like a courier. I think yeah. they're called furries. <laughs> Whatever they are. Yeah. You, gotta, you gotta get right, Justin. They're fucking weird. <laughs> You're gonna, no, no. <laughs> you get right, you get jumped by some. I know, they're, they're, they're all gonna attack some, me. Hey, oh my God, dude. Can <laughs> you know, I just say something right now? Yeah. That's the least intimidating. Meow. The, yeah. That's the least intimidating gang of all time. Yeah, yeah like, but you know, I'm not talking shit. But if right. I saw a bunch of mascots running at me, right. I don't think it'd be. A <laughs> They're like Care Bear Stare. Yeah. 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 You know, though, that would be get the most embarrassing here. ever to get your ass kicked by a giant rabbit. Dude. You know, <laughs> fucking, uh, that would suck, <laughs> dude. You yeah. just, I would. I don't want to bring that. <laughs> never on. let you live that down. All right, so <laughs> if if we have to pick a furry for each of us now, so like okay. Adam, if Adam was a furry, what would he? What, what are the mean? options? What are the, kangaroo. Well, no, no, Doug, we're, we're picking. We're picking. No, no, no. But yeah. Doug, can you pull up uh, furry, f- common furry costumes, and we'll pick from there. Yeah. Well, Adam always wants to have like some cool, like I can still, you know, l- like get chicks with whatever costume. <laughs> with my got, furry right? costume. Yeah, yeah. So he's um, got, it's got to be like some kind of tomcat, like alley cat or something. You know? I what feel are, like, well, we well, you know what? We could actually combine two of them. Yeah. So what we could do is we could make like Adam could be a kangaroo, okay, furry, right, and then Doug could be a little Joey. And we oh, can yeah. put them in Adam's pouch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's brilliant. Oh, they there could you be go. together. Yeah. yeah, there they are. 
Yeah. Justin would be bear. a... I don't know what Justin would be. I'd be a bear. I feel like you'd be like a like a rhino. For That's me. what oh, I was... That was exactly what I was going to say. A rhino? Yeah. Did, yeah. You'd like a big ass. Or like Eagle. a bull. Yeah. 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 Big, old, yeah. big old butt shit. furry. Yeah. You know what I mean? I could see that. Yeah. I don't know what Sal would be. Sal would be like, so... a, like a bird. <laughs> <laughs> like an owl, like a wise owl. Oh, I love owls. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can see him. You know, like, owls are he my turns favorite. His head just like owls are one of my favorite animals. By the way, really? Yeah, they're so incredible to look at, aren't they? Yeah, they are, and they're vicious. They're just savage. You know, when I was a kid, there was a movie called uh, Clash of the Titans. Yeah. Do you remember that movie? Oh, the gold bird. Yeah, yeah. the metal one. Do you remember his name? Fuck. Yes, Damn. I got one. You on got you. me. You got Bubo. Me. Booba? Booba. Dude, how do you remember some of that bro. Man. I don't know. I wouldn't have got that. Yeah, and he's, he was a little metal bird or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, Look at all those stats, Doug, you on fucking furries, me. man. Mm. This is a real deal right here. Yeah, they're everywhere, dude. Uh, uh, Doug, can you look up now, fur, is it, furry porn? Is it? Is it? A, is it? <laughs> now I'm under the impression that it's a it's it's a sexual thing, but is it not always a sexual thing? Is it sometimes? I, I think it's both. I think yeah. they, they just hang out, and then I think part of it's like. I don't know. They they you, go through like the weird like creature animal. So there's furry sex stuff where they have sex, but they don't actually have sex. So they keep their costumes on. And they just and rub they just, on each other. Yes, and then yeah. there's where they actually have sex with the furry costumes on, but they're but they have holes in the. Oh. Imagine how sweaty they, you would get inside of that thing. Well, here's the thing too. Part of the allure of furryism, apparently, I think I just made up that term, um, is that <laughs> if you're a guy, you could be a female furry and vice versa. So now we're mixing. Now it can be weird, right? Now you're like, oh, I'm gonna have sex with that furry over there. It's a dude. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't know that. You know what'd be fun you is to fuck with what. Like right now, the Arnold Classic is going on this weekend. How Show f- up as furries. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. We should. Yes. Can we do that? Mad yeah. Mike furry. Are we secure enough with ourselves to do that? To dress up. Or are you guys furry? worried that somebody would try and like hump your leg? While Sal we're has around? to wear that that one unitard that like. Covers your whole face, and you know. What? Have you seen people do that too, right? To be anonymous. Have you ever seen that? Well, we oh, have the big, the big. Color. Yeah, we have that. We have That's the, right, the green the, yeah. screen suit thing. Yeah, it's too tight, man. Yeah, it, look, show, it shows too much. You'll be able to see my stuff. It'll yeah. look great on you. Yeah, that's that, that's well, what we're thanks, banking Adam. on. You're <laughs> selling it. I'm glad yeah. you thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so some cool current events. I just read this headline <gasps> the other day. Why do you have to transition that way? Yeah. I was already talking about current <laughs> events already. Yeah. Oh, some more. Why do you have to announce it that way? I like like I don't know. Yeah, you got to give him shit because you guys know. give me shit. Yeah, with my bad. my stark. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like, That's yeah. what I'm gonna start calling out yeah. his bad transitions. Right. right. There's like no lube at all. Like, just, so, like, just tell me what you got to say. So dude. listen, I read this headline uh, the other day, and it, this is a huge signal that the market is shifting in a big, big way. So Weight Watchers is now shifting from weight loss. To wellness, that's a trip. What? As healthy is the next is the new skinny. That's exciting, actually. Isn't that kind of cool? That's, so na- that's crazy. So basically, they're saying that it's you know it's not just about losing weight; it's about being healthy. We're going to focus more on wellness measures, like blood pressure and other things. So pretty awesome. I think they'll probably change their you know their approach to how they count points and stuff like that right. for food. Yeah, well, this is what I would my question is, does anything really change other than you the just, marketing? Yeah, the marketing. Like that I mean a company <laughs> that big, that valuable, that <laughs> large of a customer base already, do you really right. change everything up or do you just, you know, put a new dress you on start the pig? introducing things. Yeah, or is it just another still, a new dress on a pig? Yeah. You well, know what I'm saying is it the same thing? You know what? Say what you will. Yeah. Uh no matter what it makes, it makes us look cool cuz we said that. Either way, right? yeah, it's at least they're talking about it well say what you will weight watchers is a major of course national global you know diet brand of you know where you where you hire them and you basically count macros or calories or whatever just through their own point system say what you will they're not terrible they're really not super terrible no I mean, they're they're not they're, I, I they're better than a lot of other a lot a lot of other ones yeah. i i've had i've had clients who've had good with success and i've looked at what they've done and they really do what they do is they over they simplify the hell out of everything. That's why it's so good. Which is probably why no, they, no. they've and, had such good and success. I, I do I do like how they you know it's not this you can only eat these foods or that they give them the mm-hmm. flexibility they just make it. Dude, they, they were IIF, simpl- they were IIFOM before IIFOM. They are. Mm-hmm. Yep. It really is. IIFOM <laughs> is just an just a, a <laughs> evolution to that. Which I I would argue that IIFOM is a little bit better than Weight Watchers. I would say Weight Watchers is a good step in the right direction than IIF. I am, and then obviously after that, you need to evolve mm-hmm. to where you can intuitively, hopefully, do it someday. So, 
but I get it. You know, I get the, to simplify it for people, but it, what it doesn't do is it, it, it's just another reason for you to not put the work in. And I think the work is necessary, mm-hmm. right? I think it one, it's just another way for you to be disconnected from like, I, if it I might don't be a, a step of work, yeah. right. Like the they're providing step. a service versus like <clears throat> teaching them how to, you know, well, empowering them. Well, when you go to, they, they have meetings and stuff. So when you yeah. do Weight Watchers and I'm not super privy to them. Okay. So this is just from my own, you know, secondhand experience because of clients. But when you do the full experience, if you will, you do. You have meetings, and you well, talk that's about what they did. So that's part of smart. what they, part of what they did better than everybody else was that was the they created a incredible community and accountability system within the groups. And I actually had lots of clients that did weight. Watch. I had clients that were paying me to do their nutrition and train them, but they still would go to their Weight Watcher group. Yeah, because they like the group. Because they like the support. Because they they yeah. it, they yeah, like the account, weight, account so they have to weigh in right every time they come to a group. Right, every time a group meeting, it's like an AA meeting, or they show up to a meeting. It's they, totally like that. They weigh themselves. They keep track of where you were before. So they, it's this accountability piece. All these all these other people that are going through the same process. So, you know, you know, kudos to them for bre- uh, uh, building a really good environment like that. I, I don't have anything to knock on somebody who's... No, uh, and the fact that... I mean, because remember, they're such a massive company. So when you have big companies moving in this direction, you got to keep in mind, they're not they're not trying to be trendsetters typically. What they're trying to do is read the market. Mm-hmm. And so the thing about this that excites me is that a company like Weight Watchers, which spends, you know, who knows how much money on market research, on trying to predict where the market's going to stay relevant... When a company like Weight Watchers is saying we are now focusing on wellness and they're using the word wellness. Yeah. Like that was a that was a little bit that was a kind of a small segment of the health and fitness and weight loss, you know, uh, market. Mm-hmm. Like there was wellness and then there was weight loss and then there was muscle building and then there was whatever. So so the fact that they've even chose the word wellness and said that that's the direction that they're moving is a very good reflection that the market is moving in that direction, which we've been talking about. You know, we've been talking about that since the since day uh, one, yeah. right? Yeah, household brands like that to use that kind of terminology and like think in that direction. It's it's a big deal. It's a very big deal. I think it's a good thing, but of course, what comes along with that is the perversion of that word, right? Where, uh, yeah. like, what does wellness mean? It's going to be the new functional, or yeah, like one of the buzz terms. Yeah, it's like you know, tricks cereal for kids. You know, wellness. You know, cereal. <laughs> wellness enhanced. Yeah, yeah, wellness yeah. enhanced. We threw some probiotics in there, and yeah, you know, it's, well, you just you glazed over that, but that's exactly what it's yeah, called. I know. It's probiotics on everything because we see that already happening. Uh, right yeah, now. I, know. So I just saw who is it? Someone posted there was like, a, a camp. The kombucha pills. Kombucha pills. Yeah, I was like, that was fucking what? great, dude. That's not kombucha, you fucker. <laughs> what the hell? That's a supplement. Yeah. Packed with kombucha. <laughs> so great. Basically, dude. put a little bit of kombucha juice in it. Yeah, <laughs> just like pour a little bit in there. In it's capsule. all, yeah, each capsule <laughs> captures a fragment of the yeah. SCOBY. They even use the the, the, the SCOBY, which Scooby. is the, yeah. that's the, the mushroom that you put or whatever, the fungus or yeah. whatever you do to grow. There's, but, there, there's fungus. I mean, there's uh, mushrooms inside of. Uh, is it a mushroom? No, it's a. Doug it, knows. He makes his own. Yeah, it's not a How mushroom. Do you make it, Doug? It's a, Some kind of freaking fun, fungi. Well, the scoby is a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. There you so go. there's no. So could you have you ever thought about like using like one of our brands like Four Sigmatic and blending it into like the? Would you could you do that? It's not a mushroom, so it wouldn't go well. I don't think it'd go well. Uh-huh. Yeah. No. I mean. It brews Actually, the same way, though, right? Do you brew it like tea? Is that how it works? Like no. That? So you have to make it. You have to let I want to know from Doug. Doug's the one ferment. that makes it. You don't yeah. fucking make it, do you? <laughs> so you, you actually you brew an actual fucking tea. know it all. I hear from Doug. Yeah, I use a black tea and a green tea and some sugar. The sugar is what feeds the SCOBY. And I put the cold tea into the pot or the crock with the SCOBY, which is the mushroom-like thing, but it's not really a mushroom. And you let it sit there for a week, dude. Let's fuck around and put some yeah. of the our four sigmatic cordyceps in there, man. It, why? Why not? I, uh, I don't make I it mean, a super. I guess you can throw it. In well, whatever you, you it want. In, I would put it in afterwards. Oh, so okay. after you brew it all, then you just put it in afterwards. Yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah, here's why I wouldn't. I don't know what the anti. Uh, if there's any, you know, uh, what's the word? Um, antimicrobial effects or anything from. What may be in four sigmatic and mixed with the kombucha. Oh, you think that it could have a, a, a bad re Not bad, but it might negate some of the effects or just be a waste of, you know, mixing. I don't know it if that would explode. even taste good. It yeah. might explode. It might create a, you might create a SCOBY yeah, bomb. Probably don't Scooby. try. We'll never know. SCOBY. Speaking Zoinks! Of four, speaking of four sigmatic, my, co- my cousin who's been having anxiety, I told him to do the chaga raishi and he said it's a great uh, relief for anxiety. 
which is what I also you know get from that mix also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, you you definitely you hog all the four sigmatic, but yeah. we're okay with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So good Justin, stuff. Justin, you don't use it really that much as much as Sal does, right? Uh, cordyceps I did for a while, which I liked, you know, um, for endurance and and uh, cognitive function. But I, uh, I wish they would make a, a horny goat weed. That's yeah. what I, I've been drinking that lately. Horny goat weed is yeah. I don't, it's not a mushroom. So how's the horny goat weed working for you? I don't, why can't force you a horny goat yet? No, not really. Just a goat. I do, I do, I do feel a little bit of, I, I do feel like a little bit of a bump after goat. I drink it, but I actually like the taste of it. I like the taste of the horny goat weed. What? Yeah. What are you doing? The tea? Or are you doing pills? Tea. Is it, what does it taste like? I do tea. It's actually really good. Huh. It's got a, a chamomile type of taste to it. You know, they take what they do is they take a goat. Yeah. That's horny. They jack it off inside. Oh, the, you whoa. had to go there in a bag, whoa. and you make it into. Uh, sorry, Doug. Doug, I'm we sorry. almost Doug did it. We that. almost we made it. Our, to it. Oh, oh, did I blow it? Ah, <laughs> no, the goat. I went sexual. I went sexual. The goat blew it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, and we mix everybody. It. I don't apologize. We mix that's it in a tea, and then you know, there you go. And you know, it's funny because the first time I gave him the horny goat weed semen, Adam was like, "This tastes familiar." I'm like, "It's actually yeah." It's actually not, Sal led me it's down not, that path. It's, it's his fault. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Yeah. hey, by the way, asshole, uh, here's a study for you. <laughs> who are you referring to, Justin? Yeah, which one? Who, who do you think I'm talking about? Yeah. Who's the asshole? Tolerance for loud noises decreases with age. You know why? Remember we had this argument about this the other day? Oh, yeah, that's right. There's well, science well, behind well, it. Well, what do we have an argument about? Well, because <laughs> Sal wanted to turn down the, the, the music and we were giving him shit. I was talking about how, man. yeah, like, and you're like, oh, no, I want to stay young because I'm yeah, I resist being older. <laughs> So <laughs> that's how I said it. Yeah. So well, angry. no, I'm just, I'm just He's so reading the underlying, okay. underlining well, psychology behind. Yeah, it. I had, I'll never forget. I had this trainer who worked for me, and his parents had protected his ears since he was a baby, and taught him to like keep earplugs in. What? And, yeah, no, check this out. Dude. I'll never forget this kid. And Is he autistic? You, no, he, you could scare the hell out of him. He was an odd brat, <laughs> but he got in my car one time. And I don't, I mean, I listen to my music loud, but not like crazy, like deafening loud, right? And he got in my car and I never, he screamed and he covered his ears. And then I turned down. He's like, autistic, bro. And, yeah. <laughs> yes. That is what it sounds like. That is like. exactly what it sounds like. You think I'm making a joke, but I'm not. Yeah. Well, maybe. Why would his parents cover his ears since he was a kid? Probably because yeah. it. Well, not literally like they were taking his hand, but I mean, like they got him, they, they kept him away from that. And they said it, it's because we tend to damage damage our ears so bad with the way we the way we do listen to music and concerts and the thing and the way we yell and we're so loud and so to protect him in that i just think he had a, a fucking helicopter parents that's what i think Dude, maybe yeah, yeah, i don't but, think he was autistic you know on, maybe, or maybe he was because back in those days they didn't so really we got call. miracle ear yeah what's that it, that helps with being, when you get deaf well so so here's what it says you know why as you get older certain things are too loud for you it's because we lose our ability to perceive higher sounds, like uh, higher frequency sounds, but we still hear the lower frequency sounds, so it distorts the sound. So uh, when we hear music, mm-hmm. it sounds more... Aggressive. Ag- and yeah. Like, like bassy. Yeah, and we don't like it. Do you right? ever think we're going to get fucked because we're sitting here with it, this in our ears? Probably. What? I know my hearing is going to be affected. So, dude, I used to play and practice in a band with drums, a bass, and like guitar at full, like cranked up volume. And it was in a basement. And so all the walls, is the sound's bouncing off all the walls without any earplugs, like, yeah. a, like an asshole. I just hope that since I got the psoriasis and the balding thing, I'll be the know, first one that's I just that's hope death. that like, like the eyesight and the fucking ear thing. I so just, I got bad news for you. <laughs> so oh, so you people who have more than one thing that happens to them are more likely to have more things. You <laughs> get out of here, buddy. <laughs> That's you can't, you can't, you can't, so much great bullshit. I, I love it. I grabbed him out for like two seconds. Oh, yeah. He's like, oh, fuck. What's He's the bad like, news? Oh, that's yeah. a bunch oh, of I gotta, sit down. I gotta sit down for this. Yeah. Erectile dysfunction is quite high. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. So new, check out this other study that I picked up here. Uh, this was published in on uh, November 6, 2007. Uh, 2017, excuse me. In the Oxford Academic. Um, they used cannabis, so CBD and THC, with a particular type of uh, uh, chemotherapy on people who had uh, multiform glioblastomas, which are a type (coughs) of uh, brain cancer. And the survival rate after one year was 83%. And by the way, uh, this type of brain cancer is is terminal, right? Many times it's very terminal. 83% survival rate after one year compared to the control group who didn't get the cannabis – 44%. Forty-four percent, double. So double. Wow, mm. double, man. That's a big fucking 
that's a big fucking deal. Do you guys know the first time that cannabis was observed to have anti-cancer effects? What, like year? Do you, like right around what, what time? Like how, how long ago we knew this? No, I don't. I'm going to say Not, 10 years. Nope, 1970s. So the, the, uh, the government had invested money in investigating cannabis and its effects on its potential um, for causing cancer. Mm. And what was coming back was that it was actually preventing cancer. They shut the study down. What? And yeah, shut it down because it didn't fit with the narrative. Right. And they shut it down. And then it, it was right after that. I think it was 1977 when Richard Nixon, you know, then really went hard on the war on drugs to go after the, you know, the, the counterculture. But the government knew that there were potential anti cancer effects from cannabinoids right before they did that. How so fucked up is that shit? Bullshit. Sometimes I'm, sometimes I'm, it I'm makes fuck, me angry. Sometimes I think that they're, they know we have, we have the cure and we just don't let anybody have it. Dude, oh, was, man, it it's it, way more cost effective to keep Don't you think that? Sick. Don't you think that sometimes, I mean, we, you know, we, the shit that we've accomplished and we've created, we're I doing, have a, a tinfoil hat on. I don't know. Man. Uh, well, <laughs> you have the tinfoil hat. There's, sometimes I do on these type of topics, you know what I'm saying? Cause it just, it just baffles me that we just can't figure this cancer thing out. We figured out all these other things yeah. and I just feel like, well, so yeah. I, I did a lot of um i'm by no means even near an expert on on the subject i've just done a lot of reading on it because i've had someone close to me who had it and you know here's the thing i thought that for a second like maybe they have maybe they know how to how to really cure this but they don't want to because there's more money in treating it rather than curing it yeah. but the reality is you know i thought about this too imagine if someone had the cure for cancer right, right. you'd make a that shit like, would be worth yeah. a lot of money trillions of dollars you know yeah. what i mean yeah. um the other thing too is yeah that, but you know what though the, the counter argument to that is that there's trillions of dollars in the, the ongoing treatments and pills to well, all here's, these patients too, here's though. what so i believe you'd make a one you'd make a trillion dollars up front of like curing everybody but then you then the business would be dead where it's an ongoing trillion right. dollar business now well here's what i believe though too i believe that well not that i just believe it there's some evidence of this when you look at the the way that pharmaceutical companies invest their money, when you invest your money, if you're a pharma company and you want to come out with a treatment for something like cancer, you know it's going to cost you around 10 years of testing and trials and to get through the FDA because the, to get make a drug legal, we have so many regulations, it's insane. By the way, many people believe that more people die because of our re- regulations than are actually saved because we're not able to get new breakthrough drugs because it's too expensive to even explore them. So if you're a, a company and you're invest and you want to invest, it probably costs somewhere like half a billion dollars just to get a drug approved. You don't want to bet your money on something that is way out there. You know what I mean? You're not going to say, okay, let's take half a billion dollars and look at its potential cure. Oh. What you're probably going to do is say, okay, let's try and create another type of chemo. Because we know chemo's got a market, you know, we know it kind of works. Let's try and create a chemo with less side effects. And so what ends up happening is we end up seeing something that kind of works and more and more money goes in that direction. Less money goes into exploring new potential types of treatments. And then on the flip side, like cannabis is not a patented product. It's a plant. So there really isn't a lot of money in, in, in how to, you know, create this into a drug that can potentially treat cancer. But since then, there have been, and it's by the way, it's on the cancer.gov website. This is the government website. They actually talk about in there, when you look up cannabis, how studies have shown that animal studies in particular and some human studies have shown that cannabis has a you know good effect on cancer. In other words, it kills cancer. There are some cancers that are more sensitive than others. So like I think liver cancer, breast cancer, brain cancer for sure, like the places where there's the, the highest concentration of cannabinoids. But I mean- who knows, man? I, how crazy will that be if we, if at some point in the future we realize that oh shit, here's a, here's a crazy treatment that is super effective in conjunction with other things or maybe on its own. Well, I think we're figuring that out right now. Yeah. I think it's it's only a matter of time, and we're seeing it. I mean, it, it, we're, you're seeing it happen. I mean, it seems like every it seems like every other day a new state gets on board with uh, with its new laws with cannabis. So. I know what I would do is I would, uh, if I were terminal, there's a couple things I would do. One of them would be fasting and the other one would be cannabis. Those are the two things I would do for myself. I wish I didn't have such a bad taste in my mouth over the industry because there, there's so much potential business-wise, just all the, op- yeah, all the opportunities mm. that will pop up. But I just don't, you know, I love fitness too much. Mm. And the, the cannabis thing was just kind of like, wah, 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 wah. Too bad. Yeah. Did you guys see uh, uh, President Trump's 
terrible economic uh, policy he just did or economic no. move. No. Uh-oh. He is going to, are you know, gonna, here's the thing, dude. Are with, we going to get into a debate about this again? No, it, it's it, not a debate. It's just, I mean, it's, I'll tell you what he did. You let me know what he what you think. Okay. He's going to be slapping a 10% tariff on aluminum uh, imports. So, again. This is more of his nationalism kind of ideas. Yeah, it's just going to make everybody pay more money. Yeah, but don't you, uh, it, this is the same move as the last one. Don't That's you it. Don't you think that this could potentially, don't you see him do, potentially setting it up to, um, you know, this is just one move. Uh, it's not the final move. I think you're looking at it like. Oh, and okay. steel too, by the way. Mm. Okay, so yeah. but it's the same thing as the last argument we had about that when we were in uh, Austin, right? Here's here's what his tweet said. It was uh, it was what was he taxing? Solar. It was solar panels. Right, right. It just makes it more expensive. That's all it does. It yeah. it, it makes it makes whatever product. What it does is it he's fl- adding a tax to it. That's yeah, it. And yeah. He's, so he's trying to control and force people to buy here, right inside of here. Which you're right, it doesn't do anything economically for us right now. But what if there? That's this is that's the short move right now. There's a long play. The, well, there no there, short long whatever uh, if accidentally it turns into something good great but but really all, all you're doing is you're taking you're making people spend more money for something they could have spent less money on so it's not and where's that tar- tariff going by the way who's getting that money the government yeah, this is no different than a tax it's no different than him saying we're going to raise taxes on something the only difference is he's selling it if he's going to if he's gonna, if he's going to cut back on taxes like for entrepreneurs and and corporations to to grow and get bigger and he's going to take that because he's cut taxes there he's going to slap it on other places that are transporting goods from out of the country it doesn't sound like that bad of an idea to me it sounds like it sounds like nothing it doesn't sound like anything this the first part's great pay less taxes i like that the second part doesn't Justif- doesn't isn't justified because the first part. It's not like he's making a deal. It's just moving money around and who's getting that money? Who's the winner? And who's the loser? Well, they're you know, all listen, the listen to his tweet. His tweet. He goes, "Our steel and aluminum industries have been decimated by decades of unfair trade and bad policy. What the fuck does that mean? With countries from around the world, we must not let our country, companies, and workers be taken advantage of any longer. We want fair and smart trade." And so what he's doing is he's appealing to this nationalism and just raising the price of things yeah. and saying this is to help the American worker. What's happening is he's, what he's doing is he's subsidizing American jobs with other people's money where you know you, you might not want to have, wanted to have spend it. So like for example, the cost of beer is probably going to go up because or all things in, in cans, all things in aluminum cans are probably going to go up now. So we'll see that right away, right after he implements this. You're going to go buy a Coke or a beer or whatever, and you're going to see an inc- increase in price because the can is more expensive because the aluminum now. 10% I, I, have, more. I have less of a problem with with taxing things that like aluminum cans, solar solar, and stuff like that than I, I think with the way we make it so difficult to even start a business and the amount that we heavily tax companies. So I would. I mean, I, I agree with you, you. You know, but at the same time, trying to plan an economy from the top. Never work. I, I, well, that's the the real question is: Is it even possible? You know, could could he, could anybody come in and actually in the with the state that we're in right now? You know, could any fucking president come in and make all the right fucking perfect moves like that, and, yeah. and and make everybody happy? It's just not possible. No, I don't know. Too, yeah, and it's just I think the nationalism part's the one that always worries me, just because you know I've seen nationalism come through like countries like Germany, and I saw what that did. Yep. yep. So it's just like it, it's red flags for me that I don't want you know, this to become a divisive thing of us separating us from the entire world where it's like, you know, now Dude, we're creating conflict for no reason. He's pushing for a military parade, like a huge, mil- which is nothing wrong with, with you know, celebrating our, you know, veterans and stuff like that. But we haven't had a mil- military parade in a long time. And it just, when you think of a big military parade with like tanks and stuff like that, which I don't know what this one's going to look like. It just brings up images of yes, <laughs> like North Korea. So, you know, don't Soviet you feel Union. like he? Don't you yeah. feel like he's just kind of it's posturing with other? Totally, yeah, 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 yeah. That's all. Totally. The, that's how I. But see that's the, that's the thing. That's like the thing I get that's it on. Yeah, if it was like just that, but I, this is like increasing with momentum. With well, his Obama decisions. was such a pussy. I'm okay. I'm kind of okay he, with. He was. You know, and now we're the other way, right? We he went was, from yeah. a, a total pussy and a pushover to now the guy who's like, oh fuck, he could push the red button any yeah, day. Well, now. you know, here's the deal. Obama, Obama looked like a pussy, but he actually bombed more countries with drones own strikes than Bush did. So that's, it's all about, Hey, that's a pussy move still, by the way. Maybe (laughs) I think it's just the public, your public, you know, who you are or whatever. 
Um, I don't even I, it might have been different had he not followed Bush, who was such a, a hawk and you know going to war with everybody. But nonetheless, it's just I, I, you know Trump does a lot of things, some things that are good and for economically speaking, and some things that are just and he's supported by his base because he's a Republican when that is against. It's supposed to be against, it's against free and open markets. And if you're a conservative and you stand for those things, you should not be so, I don't give a shit who's the president. I don't care if it's on your side or the other side. If they pass some shit that, like, you know what he just did with, with the, he made a comment about gun control and he said, uh, you mm-hmm. know, take the gun first, right. follow due process due second. Due process later. Like, Whoa. What? Come on, dude. Due process, that's, due process is first. That's why it's called due process. Yeah. So he says a lot of shit that really worries yeah, that, me that was alarming for sure yeah there's a lot of stuff that he does that kind of worries me a little bit he hasn't i don't know hasn't necessarily in terms of policy been like again like i look at the policies right i look at like n- you know the national defense authorization act or the patriot act or things that are really fucking scary and sometimes the presidents come out and they sound really good but then you look behind the behind the scenes trump sounds a lot worse than he is many times. Many times he just tweets and you're like, oh my God, he yeah. sounds terrible. And then you're like, well, he's just, no, I think that's he's ha- just a buffoon. I think that's he part of the strategy. Reaction. Yeah, Maybe. He gets reaction. I don't even think it's him tweeting. <laughs> you think someone else really? is tweeting? No, I, I, on staff is 100% doing that? I yeah. believe that. 100% I think that. I think that's part of the campaign strategy. Now that he's no longer campaigning, I think that's part of the presidency strategy is I think there is a, a, a brilliant mind behind all of that that is pretending to be his voice. I don't think the motherfucker tweets. Did you ever I don't. watch... You're the fucking president. Yeah. I barely have time to tweet or Instagram. If I was a president, I would find the I best. I don't know, man. Sometimes some of his tweets, yeah. I'd fire whoever wrote them. No. I, <laughs> see, I think that I think that's all on it. There's like a guy. There's a very specific guy that was behind a lot of his campaigning. Of course, dude. And, no, I know. There's a Netflix series on I'm trying to remember the name of it, but uh, it's like called whatever his name is in in like i watched the whole trump family one i saw that one okay one this is a different one but like the, yeah he's responsible for a couple different like campaigns politically and uh, I, I mean who's to say he's not still uh orchestrating things oh, like you said yeah, i just I, that, I, you know I, I think it would be naive of us to think that you get all the way up to presidency and you lack some sort of brilliance like that. You can hate someone, love them, praise them, talk all good, all bad. Ah, bu- bullshit. Okay, let's see you go become the president and yeah. see what it takes to do that. Oh, and never no, in a million no, no, years would right. I want to do that shit. Right, no, right. No, like, thanks. I mean, you got to be a motherfucking gangster to get all the way to that point. And you, I tell you what, you're you're five steps ahead of 99% of the population, whether they, you, they think it or not. And I know there's a bunch of fucking really smart people that are going like, oh, bruh, 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 bruh. Yeah. it's like, okay, buddy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Well, to be able, just to be able to handle the scrutiny with being in a position like that yeah <sighs> fuck that stress i wouldn't want I, I i envision this i envision like you win the presidency you just went through hell everything was just focused on you half the country absolutely hates you because i don't care where what you do half the country's gonna hate you <laughs> right right then you you're sworn in and you're like oh this is great i'm the president now let's get to work then they bring you in the office they sit you down close the doors and like all right uh, we're the ones that run shit. Yeah, here's the deal. Yeah. Here's the deal now. Yeah, yeah. You're this allowed- is how shit is. Right, right. Yeah, we have, yeah, aliens invaded Earth 50 years ago. They control the world. No, <laughs> There's lizard people underground. Well, yeah. that's what Tom DeLong would right. say. You just yeah. go downstairs and bowl. That's all you're allowed yeah. to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's all you're allowed to do, bro. Yeah. Here's what you're going to say today. You're yeah. looking at like, I don't want to say this yeah, shit. Right. It's terrible. No, no, that's Everybody you're thinks you're an asshole, so we're going to tweet that way. Yeah. So just we're going to stay- We're going to keep going with this asshole narrative. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have to be that guy. I do, dude. I believe that, man. I believe it's i mean here look at we're talking about it you know what i'm saying like we're talking about it if he if, and I, to me that is what he's in search of and that's how he got to where he's at right now is people talking about him and you know you know what this guy's gonna you know this guy's gonna make so much money when he's out of oh, office oh god of course he's gonna start like a series or a, TV, new, a news TV. network right, right. no 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 that's what he's gonna do a news network mark yeah. my words media company mark my words the real news yes yeah. called he, the real news non-fake news he yeah. is going to start a news network I guarantee it oh, I bet man. money on it that's a pretty smart strat yep. you know is there like a thing when you sign as a president though you can't do certain things like that for X amount of years uh, no I don't think it's like no compete like a non-compete. yeah like a no, <laughs> I, I know, right? non-compete with our country and our government <laughs> right I feel like I feel like you shouldn't be able to do like a newspaper or a yeah. news network right after oh, a God, dude. <laughs> uh, I believe with all the connections that you have that could be like the dirtiest fucking play ever you Trump's know? real news network <laughs> real news yeah. all the time like the biggest mistake we did was like taking him out of office you know right. now he's really fucking us you know? right 
<laughs> At oh, least shit. in office, he's not really doing anything. Right, and we're keeping him busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The best thing a president just bullying can, a lot. The best thing a president can do is get in office and like shrink government and do nothing. Let everybody else. Let everybody take care of what they're supposed to do. Let the market do what it's supposed to. Just don't. Fuck, don't throw any wrenches in the machine. The problem is, you know what that sounds like? That sounds like if like somebody came in, we hired a CEO for Mind Pump, and they come in, they're like, you know what? I'm, I love this company, Mind Pump, and I'm going to reduce the income. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, no one of these motherfuckers want to do that. Not the go- yeah, they not all not pretend go- like it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But they all come in, and they see all the revenue, all the opportunity. Like, fuck this. Oh, I ain't going to reduce I'm anything. Tell- I'm telling you, right? It's, that's, oh, my God. That's exactly yeah. what happens, though. Don't you think uh-huh. the same thing? And that would be the same attitude. You would never see a CEO come in, take over this company, look at the revenue streams, and go, you know what I think? I think we're going to shut some of these revenue streams oh, I'd, off. I'd love it. Yeah. I'd love it. I'd right. love it. If somebody, <laughs> yeah, somebody got up there and was like, oh, you know what I'm doing now? Uh, everybody in Congress. This is your last term because everybody can only serve a couple terms now, and then you can never do it again. Yeah. And then, boom, assassinated. Yeah. You're, you're done. All right. We doing an unboxing? We are. Thrive Market Unboxing. Speaking of sponsors, one of our favorite. I love Thrive. You know, dude. Arguably the one we use the most. Uh, it's yeah. for sure. I mean, they're just, they're getting better, too. They're yeah. getting better with how they section their stuff, the products that they have in there. No, it's, it's a dope brand, dude. Very practical brand. Yeah. Everybody can use it. So, what, do we, what do we got here, Doug? Sal put out a list here a week or so back, and I ordered a bunch of things off that list. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Now, one of the big things that he asked for when he put his list out there was bone broth. And I will say that the theme of this box is bone broth. Oh, okay. So we start with our epic bone broth, Turkey Cranberry Sage. I like the epic brand. It's very good <laughs> brand. Ones. Very good brand. Yeah. They make good jerky too. So this is some ghee, organic valley. It's oh, not, it's not thank bone you, sir. broth. Why is it in the can? Pass that over here. That's different than my. No, organic. it's not a can. Oh, it's not a can. It's, it's, a, a, jar. it's a jar. Oh, I was gonna say, it looked like a can from here. Hey, Justin, can I get you to help me with this? You know, these you things are it, so buddy. well wrapped. It's yeah. amazing. Justin's gonna justin it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, mess everywhere now. Gonna, he's gonna make a big old mess. Rawr. He's gonna bite it. Dude, they are wrapped like yeah, crazy. another bone broth from Epic. This is a different flavor. You tripled up on the bone broth. Oh, there. yeah. And now I got a three pack of Thrive Market bone broth. More bone broth. Bro, okay, yeah. so Dude, you are so boring. So, boring. so boring. This yeah. is. My beef, list won't look like this. Chicken and turkey. Okay, so so the, the Thrive Market bone broth is actually my favorite one so far. Okay. No, no joke. And then the last thing on the list yeah, here coconut oil. was some peppermint Dr. Bronner's. Organic. Oh, thank you. And uh, peppermint Dr. Yeah, Bronner's. Dr. Bronner's. And some coconut oil. Oh, Dr. Dr. Bronner's, Bronner's makes their... uh, coconut oil. Yep. I didn't know that. They sure do. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory-tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk-free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I dot com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. All right, our first question is from Katie Gassman. Do you have any tips on how to outgrow people gracefully? Mm. I have friends whom I care for deeply because of what they meant to me in the past, but we no longer have things in common or align with goals. Is there a way to keep them in my life or do I need to cut them out and totally move on? What a great question. Yeah. And, it's, and what a tough one. You know what? This is, a, this is a question that I've had to ask myself several times throughout my life and I in I think everybody goes through this, especially if you're a growth-minded individual. And what I mean by that is growth-minded individuals tend to want to improve and change and find new things that influences the way they live and they get new information and they change how they do certain things. They're trying to evolve. You're trying to evolve. And I think everybody you know, evolves, uh, of course, to a certain degree, but there's a lot of people who kind of stay stuck and rigid mm-hmm. in a particular way because you know, growth is scary and, and change is scary. But you know, here's, here's what I've come up with for myself, and I don't know if this is the right answer, um, but this made sense to me when I first came up with it. There are going to be people that you encounter in your life that you're going to connect with over things, events, um, and, and hobbies. So there's going to be people you're going to connect with who they're into the same things as you. So all, if you are become a coffee aficionado and you make, make, make a friend who's totally into coffee 
and you guys bond over over coffee. What a random or, thing for you to choose. I, I, I was going to say alcohol because that's, but I was trying to. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what is that? Yeah, <laughs> I love that. You, know, you know, you have a friend that you yeah. just, you and her just love coffee, yeah. and you just don't want to break it up. A lot of people <laughs> like coffee, Adam. <laughs> yeah, no, they do. But yeah. you know, you, I think you get what I mean. Like, there, there's something that you're, you're passionate into. about it. Maybe you and your. Yeah, you know, I thought sports. Yeah, I thought maybe you, a sport. You played, a, you played on a team, or together. you know, you and your, you know, you're you're out and you're trying to pick up on girls, and you meet a guy who's into picking up on girls, and you guys go out together and that's what like, you bond hey, over Mysterio I like your style exactly. let's go pick up some chicks exactly yeah. you know and those, there's those people that you meet and you can great develop great relationships great friendships have great memories and you're going to meet a lot more of those kinds of people versus the second kind of people who you're going to connect with over the fact that you're both growth minded that you're both growth oriented that you're you're connected on a more core level those are the rare ones, and those are the ones that tend to stick around, and it's usually like a couple people. Um, everybody else falls in the first category where, you know, I had friends that I, you know, when I was doing jujitsu, we, we would bond over jujitsu, or when I was in school, you know, we, we because we went to school together, or because I like to party, or whatever, and we would bond over those things, but then when I change and grow, and I, my interests change... <coughs> I no longer bond with these kinds of people. I mean, you know, I think a lot of guys have experienced this when they get married. You know, they've got their buddies that they go out and drink with and party with, and then they meet a girl, they fall in love, they get married, they have kids, and then they still have that buddy who never got married or never really grew past it and still wants to go out and party and drink. How was that buddy? And you just don't have, <laughs> you just don't, you can't connect with them because you don't do that same thing anymore. And, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And, I, and the, I think the challenge is, I know the challenge for me was I felt like I wasn't honoring how important they were to me or how you know awesome they were at a particular time in my life. So it's almost like I wanted to stay friends with them because I felt like if I didn't, I wasn't honoring what good people they were. But in reality, it's it's actually more of an honor to acknowledge it and also acknowledge that you're, you're different now yeah. and you just you just do different things. Um, I don't think you need to break up with anybody. I, I know, uh, you know, I've, I've had friends that were girls who tend to do this with other girls. We're like, I can't hang out with you, which I think is kind of weird. Yeah. Guys don't really do that so much. I think you know, we just kind of I've done slowly stop doing that out. several times. You yeah. broke up with a guy, you absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I just, in <laughs> fact, what did you say I, I, in, the, in this last year? I've actually had this conversation twice. What do you say to break up with a guy? <clears throat> well, first of all, it, it it normally leads to this like. So I try and and I I wouldn't like say it's over dinner with music and no, stuff. No 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 no. It's okay. been like talking in person. This is just, the last time we're gonna do yeah. it. No no no. I'm it's sorry. like this. So here's here's the deal. Like I think that I like to light uh, candles. When you look at all the people that you you surround yourself with, like the friends that have been with you forever and you, and they're a part of your growing up in childhood or adolescence, and then you have your friends, your your adult friends that you have now. And when you look at them collectively, there's there tends to be in most groups that I know, there's a, a handful of people uh, in in your circle that you've start to learn that they're they are not feeding your flame. You're not, they're not into maybe where you are or they're not growth minded like you are. And in fact, they could potentially be somewhat holding you back. But yet you're torn because fuck, I've, I had 10, 15 years of childhood with them and my mom still talks to them and they love, they're like family to me. So I kind of look at it like they're, they're, they're family, but I don't hang out with all my family and even talk to all my family on a very, very regular basis. And so if you're if you're looking at your friends like the like 80% of the people that you're spending the time with should be the ones that are feeding your flame. And then the other 20% could be like and which to me that means like once every couple months I'm catching up with some of these close friends that go all the way back to childhood. But what I started doing was I didn't make a big deal about it at first. I just we went I went I had friends that I literally hung out with every single weekend. Like every weekend we were all single dudes, we weren't in relationships. It was always about drinking or playing video games or just fucking around every weekend. And you know, that those that's those set of friends are still friends of mine. I just spend about, you know, 80% or 90% less of the time with mm -hmm. them. And I just, what I stopped doing was I, I stopped making myself available for those same weekends. And eventually that started a conversation or a, hey, bro, what the fuck? You know, we used to get together every single weekend, and when and when that opportunity arose, so they corner you like that, then yeah, it would oh, make so sense. That you have to have that conversation, right? right? I yeah. thought you were like calling them up, yeah, like, "Hey, John, I need to have a talk with you." I've had that happen, but it's just been more of a natural, like, um, you, you know, I'm moving moving past like certain 
groups of guys I used to hang out with where it's just like, dude, it, you know, I, I have all this stuff going on where I didn't have to really explain it anymore. It was just like, I'm not available. I'm not available like I used to be, you know, and it's no, it's no bad feeling or like I'm, I'm, I'm moving away from you purposely. It's just that it doesn't make sense, you know, for me to, um, you know, be in that space anymore. So listen, radical honesty is always the way to go in situations like this. And it's yeah. hard sometimes because hard. you're worried about their feelings. But I had another friend that was, you know, reaching out to me because he wanted to go fishing all the time and I kept turning it down, turning it down, turn it down. And he finally was like, you know, Hey man, what the fuck? Like, you know, we're, we're best of friends and I go and do things sometimes that are with you that you, that I'm not into as much. And I said, listen, you know, I've, I've come to realize that all of us are very busy guys. We've all grown up and out of a lot of the hobbies that we used to do together. Although we still love some of these things, snowboarding, wakeboarding, basketball, these were in sports. And so we have that still in common, but now we've grown older and now we're into other things like fishing and golf you know, and I'm more into like business and breeding and shit like that. So, you know, we have these different interests. And I said, listen, I don't expect you guys to come up and go get a workout with me because you guys have no fucking desire to do that. So I'm not going to bug you or ask you about it. But I also don't hold that against you and yeah. think that we're less of friends because of that. It's that our interests have changed as we've gotten older. And I'm I'm okay with that. I'm okay. I love that you have found this passion for fishing and you're fucking really good at it and you love doing it. And I don't want to take away from that. And maybe sometimes if everything lines up, I'm gonna come, but I'm most certainly not gonna go out of my way to go go fishing. I just don't want to. You know, I just don't have a desire whatsoever. Now I have a desire to see you, and so I'm sure if I hadn't seen you in a really long time that I would I would probably take up a fishing opportunity just to see you. But to be honest with you, I'd rather not. You well, know? Yeah, but have you, you guys ever hang. have you guys ever been in a situation though where you you've changed and grown and then you all of a sudden not that you don't like the person like I don't like you, I hate you, but just like all of a sudden like wow, I I get nothing out of even hanging out with you no matter what we so do. So I yeah. just had a friend yeah. and that I told you guys that I went and uh went to the OKC and the Warrior game with he picked up a limo to a. I hadn't hung out with him in over two years, and we kind of had this breakup thing. And you know when we saw each other, it was nothing but love. And I told him, man, I love you, and you know I hope you're always in my life somewhat. You know, but I don't hang out with him. And part of the reason why I don't hang out with him is because he kind of got stuck in our hometown, and you know he was kind of into the same shit that we were into when we were 15 years old, and. You know, he he started to make up a lot of stories and and tell a lot of lies, and I, you know, it always was weird to me because I was like, man, I, I I love you for no matter who you are. I don't need you don't need a story tell. And so I literally just kind of cut him off from conversation. He would he would call me in the during the week, and he'd want to talk on the phone like for hours. And you know, half the conversation would be sports, the other half of the conversation would be some made up story to impress me. Yeah. And I finally just told him, I said, man, hey, I don't I don't have time right now in my life to have these types of conversations all the time and kind of ghosted him, man. And I think that um, because I was honest with him and I said that to him, I think at first he was a little kind of like butthurt, but over time we have mutual friends and I would always tell, I would always speak highly of him and say, I love him, man. He's like, fa he's like family to me. He's like, that yeah. he's like that cousin that you know, you have no business fucking hanging out with. Like he's <laughs> fucking around doing drugs. He's doing stupid shit, but he's still your cousin. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I look at it like that. Like he's still family to me. Like the guy's been through a lot with me as a kid. I've just grown out of him. Yeah. You know? I've, I've had to deal with that. Like some of my friends from high school that uh, were kind of like your tough guy, you know, like, mm. like the tough guy thing. I'm just, I have no place for the tough guy thing. And yeah. so like I've, I've definitely kind of eliminated that kind of energy that's around me anymore. It's just like, it doesn't serve me in any fashion anymore. Like, mm -hmm. and some people that still hold on to that and like try to posture and, and we go places and be a certain attitude and, Oh bro, like, get the fuck that's out a, of here. You know, the movie, no you know, the movie, that. Goodwill hunting. Yeah. Like that's my crew of boys, yeah. literally to a T. Yeah. Just like that, fucking around, all riding together in the car and shit like that, calling each other names, talking shit to each other. Yeah. Oh, then we go beat up somebody. <laughs> you know, saying like yeah, that was literally like the crew I hung out I with. I think was. I think the mo I think really what starts to happen, really if you peel it back, is if you aren't you are not being your own real, true, authentic self, and so you connect with people with this maybe not authentic part of you or this. Like posturing, like, you know, we all go through it when we're kids, like trying to be tough or trying to be the guy that does. 
but it may not be your real, true, authentic self. Mm. And you're putting that out and you're connecting over it. But then as you peel back these layers and start to become who you Dude, really it's are, well, it's, you such can't an connect it's such a visible insecurity. Well, well it's, it's ridiculous. A, if you look at your friends that you know you're not supposed to be with, that's a huge reflection of yourself. And I'll give you an example of what I mean by that with the friends that I was just saying about that, you know, we get in fights and we used to. That was because I had this thing that goes all the way back to childhood. My father, I don't have my father after seven years old. Um, a lot of moving around. I didn't have a lot. Of, so loyalty meant everything to me. Mm. So these guys that I would hang around with that I knew that if we got into a brawl, they would take you a, your back. They would get my back. Right. They would take a bottle over the head. They were family to me. They were blood brothers, you know? So right. I, and that was, this is my own insecurities. This is my own childhood stuff that I w I'm attracted to that. And I grew out of that because I figured that out. So if you and are you're showing, you're proving your own loyalty. Right, and yeah. right. So if totally. you, if you have a circle of people that you have a hard time breaking free from, part of why you have a hard time breaking free for them is they're, they're providing or they're feeding an insecurity of yours that's probably rooted back to childhood that you're still trying to either work through or maybe you've worked through it but you haven't learned how to cut mm. that off from Here's them. a good sign mm. when you know that you're hanging out with someone that you're probably kind of over. When you meet up with them and the only things that you guys can talk about are the old times. Or yeah, other like people. Old yeah, shit. Old shit. Like we get together and it's like nothing about now or yeah. moving forward. It's all about right. all the shit that we did before and then you're done telling stories and then you're like... uh you know, now what? I mean, like I said, for, for there's a few people that I honestly connect with on a very core level. And really it's, it's, we connect over character. We connect over, over growth. So I know because we connect over growth, no matter where we grow, we're always going to connect versus connecting over things or events or insecurities or our inauthentic selves. Mm -hmm. So consider it a good thing, not a bad thing. And it can be tough because it's a little bit scary, especially when I have a friend right now that's going through this. She's, you know, she's got a bunch of friends who she hung out with a lot. And this friend of mine now is growing, learning quite a, you know, learning a lot of things about herself, learning a lot of things about the world and is really radically changing how she viewed things. I mean, the reality is she didn't like fully believe in the same things her friends did, but she just kind of went along with them. But now that she's, where she's at now, she's looking at her friends and she's like, we don't connect over anything. So she's got like five friends that she no longer connects with. And, and she, you know, I was talking to her about it and she's like, this is really tough for me. And we had this conversation. I said, yeah, but you've made these other new friends that you now are connecting on, on different levels. And she's like, you're absolutely right. So it, it can be a scary thing, but I don't know if there's necessarily an easy way to do it. I think the best way to do it is to be honest about it Yeah. because there, it, you're not doing anybody any favors by you're not doing yourself any favors, that's for sure. And I don't think you're doing the other person any favors by pretending or trying uh, and being inauthentic. Next question is from Jen Kinserly, Realtor. How many times per week should females, assuming it is different than for males, hit each muscle group? So uh, it's not, not, not it's not different uh, for females. The, the biggest difference is in individuals. So... You know, if we if we look at the individual, you can see that beginners obviously don't need to work out each muscle group as frequently as uh, more advanced people. And the funny thing is, the old bodybuilding adage was actually the reverse. So the old, you know, when when body part split routines were getting real popular, or at least the ones that showed you trained each body part once a week, what they used to say was, when you're a beginner, you work out the whole body three days a week, and then as you get more advanced. You go to a split where you hit each body part once a week and you train like chest on Monday and back on Tuesday and so on and you do lots of volume. I remember literally reading articles and articles and articles in Muscle and Fitness and Flex Magazine that said that exact thing. The irony of that, like a lot of the information we get in fitness is it's the complete opposite. It's actually the opposite is true. When you look at the actual studies, they show that the muscle building signal, the adaptation signal peaks uh, and then starts to drop after about 48 hours in beginners. In advanced people, that shit drops after some studies have showed 16 hours. Wow. So more frequent training is probably more beneficial the more advanced you get and less frequent training you can get away with a little bit more as you're a beginner. Now, my experience as a trainer completely supports that 100% and my own personal experience with myself. The more consistent I am with my workouts – the more frequent I can work out and the more frequent I need to work out to continue to get my body to progress. When I'm like 
taken a week or two weeks off or I haven't been training very hard, mm. then less frequent like then becomes, you know, probably better because too frequent then is too much. So I used to break it up in a month, right? So when I would be and I I'm about to do this right now again. So I would I would look That's at That's right, you're back into working out. Yeah, I'm only two days in right now. So I'm I'm back to that and it's extremely low amount of volume right now. And of course, I'm, I'm being very sensitive with my Achilles because it hasn't fully even healed. But what I'll do is uh, the first, this whole first month, so I've got the Fitbit back on, I'm tracking my need, I'm, I'm paying attention to how many uh, sets, my total volume per muscle group. And I'll look at that at, at, in, in the entire month and, I, and I'll look at, okay, I hit the shoulders this many times this month, I hit the chest this many times, and I'll go through each muscle group and I'll look at that. And then when I lead into the second month, I'll now start to slowly increase uh, the frequency on each of those. So it, do, it doesn't always break out into this perfect uh, week a lot of times. I think everybody wants to go, oh, I'm going to hit the muscle one time or two times mm-hmm. or three times a week. But really, the body doesn't work on this 24-hour, seven-day-a-week perfect clock. Nope. So I like to look at it as like a, a, a big month, and I see how many times uh, or where my frequency is for each one of my muscle groups, and then I slowly increase that. And I think that the biggest mistake that I see anybody that that, that is look, or searching for their, how much frequency I should do with a muscle group is they go from not hitting it very frequently to all of a sudden hitting it two or three times because you hear on Mind Pump that we encourage more frequency. But we I still stick with you know, always trying to do as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change. And so the first month, it's all about doing that as little as possible to elicit some sort of change and tracking that and kind of seeing where I'm at and then building upon that. I mean, if you're somebody who uh, the first month goes by and you only hit the chest, you know, five five times total in the month, well, the next month I'm going to take it up to six or seven. You know, which means maybe that one week I'm getting it two two times, or I'm I'm rotating it every five days or so, or whatever the math works out to to increase to six, right? So uh, that's the strategy that I personally use myself, and I've I've taught uh, especially competitors and and clients that really care about um, progressing consistently. Like you know, I think that's the key is that you know if you're somebody who is really trying to sculpt and shape your body. Uh, setting a plan and being consistent is number one, right? Like we say this, we haven't said this on the show in a long time, which was such a great statement that Sal said a long time ago, which is even a a crappy program done consistently is superior to the best program in the world done inconsistently. So first being consistent and tracking what that frequency and what that looks like and then slowly increasing that. That would be my advice. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, when it comes to, again, it depends on the individual, Um, like Adam saying, start, slow and see how your body responds. But, you know, as you get more advanced, you can work out more frequently. Here's the, and here's the thing. I think a lot of people think we're anti body part split routines. What we, what we're anti is the concept of the super low frequency and super high volume that some of them advocate for, because a split can work just fine if you know how to utilize frequency properly. The old splits are all the one body part per week. Yeah, and you're reasonable, yeah, about your volume within that uh, workout. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, I think I mentioned the the, the recent study, right, that shows that muscle damage isn't what causes yeah. or, or, or sets muscle growth in motion and, in fact, may actually reduce mm-hmm. the amount of muscle growth. And it's so funny because uh, when you do this long enough, you just start to learn things and you start to ignore you the just advice. You see what works, and then science catches up. Did right? you talk about that? You posted on the forum. You know what? Speaking of the forum right now, I just want to let everybody know this all month long that the, the forum is free with any of our bundle purchases. And this is the type of stuff that goes on our forum every single day. Yeah, I every, post all these studies. All yeah, on time. top of that, I mean, too, uh, so I've been trying to focus a little bit more on you know the apparel side of things within the business. And what's great is like I've been getting a lot of ideas and people that want certain things, they'll, they'll suggest them on the forum and guess what? I read it. So, you know, if, if you guys ever want any kind of specific merchandise or have ideas, whatever, right now we have women's tanks available, which I know a lot of women have been like demanding and they've been like really looking forward to it. And so far, and when you're in the forum, you get half off on all the t-shirts. That's it. So, you, so it's, it's all like all this stuff is, uh, we definitely pay attention to that group. Mm-hmm. So it's free all month long with any bundles. Next question is from eat pretty food. Do you think food sensitivities can play a large role in the inability to lose fat? Is there a test you would recommend? Definitely food sensitivity, excuse me, can play a large role 
in your inability to lose fat. And of course, it depends on how intolerant you are to a food or how big of a, a reaction you have to that food. But consider this, right? There's From an inflammation perspective? Well, yeah. I mean, hormones, right? So they have these things called continual glucose monitors, mm -hmm. um, GSMs. And you can put them on and they will measure your glucose level, levels in real time. So you can eat a food, you can look at the, the device and you can see like, oh, there's my blood sugar going up and there's the crash and mm -hmm. you can start connecting it to how you feel and all that stuff, right? So since they've had these devices and they've been running tests, they found that some interesting, interesting things have happened with some people where somebody will have a higher insulin or, or glucose spike with say, you know, oatmeal than they will with uh, a cookie. You know, things that you don't expect, right? Because the glycemic index says quite specifically that sugar is going to give you a higher spike than say, you know, a more complex carbohydrate. And yet some people are the reverse. Or some people would eat something that had no any no carbohydrates in it, or, right. you know, or very little protein. It's something that you would think has no effect on, you know, blood glucose. And yet glucose. their insulin is spiking. And yes, yet their glucose will spike. And so it's like, what the hell is going on? Well, what's probably happening is they're eating something that has uh, that's a food intolerant, uh, that they're intolerant to, I should say. They're getting an immune reaction to it, so it's a stress response in the body. That spikes cortisol. Cortisol tells the, ins the liver, release sugar. Because remember, your liver stores the vast majority of the glycogen in your body is stored in your liver, or a lot of it is stored in your liver. And when your body is in fight or flight, it releases all the sugar to give you ready energy. Mm -hmm. So anytime you're stressed out, right? Like if you're in a room and a burglar walks in with a gun, you're going to have a spike in, uh, uh, in, in blood sugar. And that's good because it'll, it'll help you move fast and react to whatever danger is there. Well, it reacts like that to any stress, including, you know, too intensive exercise or, uh, you know, a thought, but also a food intolerance. So if you have a food intolerance, your blood sugar levels are rising and dropping much more so than they would without the food intolerance. That can contribute to the inability, inability to lose fat because we all know what happens when your blood sugar rises and then crashes. Mm -hmm. You typically get a huge uh, appetite boost. Um, it can also cause uh, inflammation, which then you know, further you know, uh, exacerbates the issue. It can cause water retention. Mm -hmm. I've seen people remove food intolerances from their diet, not change their calories, not change their mm -hmm. macros, and lose water weight, but then also find that they, it's much easier for them. Besides, of course, they feel better and all that stuff, but then it becomes much easier for them to eat, quote unquote, healthy, because they're not getting these wild fluctuations in, in, in autoimmune type reactions. This is the type of stuff that I, I wish that I understood and knew when I was a young trainer, man. Yeah. You remember you remember having clients where you're like, fuck, dude, they're doing everything they're supposed to be doing. Why Some are they days, not? yeah, they just they, they come in, they're heavier, you know, they're, they're complaining about being bloated. Yeah, just not seeing yeah. results, and you can't put your finger on exactly what it is because you're looking at all the basic stuff. You're looking at the macros. and you're you're looking I wish our big rocks. Right. Yeah, and, they're and, important. Right, right. And you're looking at your programs, but there was always that exception to the rule that it just didn't add up. It's like, why is this person? I used to sometimes think they were lying. So, oh, a lot of times I did. Yeah. And and I feel bad now because back then I just figured like, oh, this client isn't ready for real results and success yet because they just haven't made that mental switch yet to really mm -hmm. be disciplined. Mm -hmm. And now I feel bad because I think back like, man, probably a good half of those, maybe more. Because there, are, of course, there are some that are being fucking lazy and probably lying. I mean, that's just bottom line. Yeah. Right? <laughs> there are there, some of those. They still are. You know, but they were probably more the outliers. And there was probably a lot of people that struggled with things like this that just didn't know. And I think we're seeing it, it's more common mm -hmm. now than ever, you know? Yeah, I mean, think about it this way. Do you think your body is going to be more effective at, at adapting in positive ways, building muscle, burning body fat if you're healthy versus if you're not as healthy? <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's substantial. And I think that too, even going through like my own little process of like, Oh yeah, what did you? We, you've removed some foods recently. Yeah, yeah, I have. I've moved removed a lot of grains in my diet, and um, to be honest, like I've been, I've been trying to really get my digestive, um, you know, rituals down a lot better. So that way, I'm like chewing my food. You know, I'm not drinking like cold water with it. Like you said, it's suppressing, you know, the the acid, uh, to to maintain its normal function of like breaking down mm -hmm. foods. And so, like my biggest issue is that. 
I was sort of uh, bypassing all that natural process. And so then it turned into, you know, where I, I would be inflamed all the time and I would have like acid reflux and I didn't realize what a substantial impact that was making just on me retaining, um, you know, water and, and, and also feeling like, you know, my metabolism wasn't what it used to be. Mm. So it's interesting to see, like, I know it's all very much of a, a placebo or, 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 or anecdotal. anecdotal, thank you. Um, but at the same time, it's it like I noticed me just working on that has already paid off as far as like me kind of leaning out and then well, you definitely look easier. taller. Thanks, yeah, <laughs> I've definitely grown inches. Yeah, it's 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 you know, here's the, here's the question I like to ask people when they say when I people will debate me about this, right? Like, oh no, food intolerances. Somebody debates you? Yeah, I know. Crazy. They never I thought, I'm, I thought I'm the only crazy <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> no, they'll be like, you know, food intolerances don't have a bigger role in, in, in fat loss. It's, it's It doesn't play a big role at all. And I'll say, well, do hormones play a role in fat loss? Ooh. And, and of course, like right. nobody's going to deny that. Like no. if you... If your hormones are off, your fat storage is, uh, it's different. You'll store it differently on your body. You may store more body fat. Um, like if you're a man and you have low testosterone, you're going to store more body fat than if you have higher testosterone. Oh, I can, I can attest to that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think you were commenting on that, right? No, it's a trip, man. It's a it changes how you disperse. It, it it's, yeah, it even changes how I carry the weight. It's mm -hmm. a fucking trip right now to watch what my body went through the last six months. It's <coughs> like it's a wonder I didn't jump off some bridge, bro. It's <laughs> fucking Jeez. hella depressing. Don't say that. Shit. No, it's very dep It's actually, and I and I definitely can relate to any man that has gone through that, and I think it's given me a ton of empathy for it because. You know, it wasn't just as simple as, okay, let's try and fix these hormones. There was a major psychological piece. And as a, as a man, when you, one, first of all, have been kept yourself in really good shape most of your life. And even when I kind of fell out of shape, I still was in decent shape. And then to see uh, myself put body fat on, that's one thing. That's already challenging. And then to get hurt and then to see how my body started to add body fat, it just, it, I, it created this kind of pear shape that I'd never had. Like even when I would put on weight before, I'd get like this little bit of a tummy or I would lose, you know, I get softer, you know, or I get a little back fat or whatever. But I've got like these, like these fucking <laughs> weird ass pear shape, dude. Like it's so weird, dude. Yeah. It's not, uh, it's so not fuckable, bro. It's like, oh, uh, man. Depends so, though. Yeah. I thought yeah. you were looking kind of cute. <laughs> yeah. I was like, hey, he's getting some hips on him. Oh, no, no, but it changes how yes, you know so it does. hormones yes, play it does. a role. I, I can yeah. concur. Yes. Hormones play a role. So can food sensitivities cause sure. changes Absolutely. in your hormones? Definitely. Next question is from Zelezniak Vera. How do you define failure? It's the first step to success. Yeah. If you can't learn to lose well, you're never going to be a good winner. That's it. That's mm -hmm. it right there. I, okay. For, <laughs> we're done. Yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> that is, for for, for me, add. for me, failure is uh, not learning. So if if I do something, if I take a step towards something, if I start a business or if I make a decision on something or if I try and do an exercise oh, and I, you know, quote unquote, fail at achieving my goal and I don't learn from that. Then that's a failure. How we should have defined is this yeah, like is those. this muscle failure? Is this no, like, this is like so no, broad, just, right? Yeah. No, I think okay. it's total failure. Like just okay. failure, like you said. Well, right? I think okay. yeah, that's the way I was because I was interpreting it too. Like muscle as far failure. as like how I um, maybe if I react emotionally or something first is like my go to uh, response. You know, then I failed. You know, where I, uh, you know, sometimes I guess. I don't know. Yeah, that's, you've been a failure a lot. You should be able to talk about this. <laughs> I, I have. I have failed a lot of things. So <laughs> it's part, of, it's it's part of the natural process. No. Yeah, you may take risks. Wait, how's the quote go? Right on the uh, other side of failure is, resides success. Right. So right. I, I, I truly believe that it's if you're going to have true success, I think failure is necessary. Yeah. And and that's what I meant by if you're going to be a winner, you have to learn to lose. And I think the, where the growth happens is in the losses and in the failures. The growth doesn't happen in win. I've never wanted something or succeeded at something like that and grew. That's not when I grew. I grew along the way, failing, trying to get to a success. And so the real gems are hidden within the failures. And I think that's what teaches us the most about ourselves. Come on, life is a great teacher. Yeah. I mean, failing, for me, it's like if you if you get like knocked down, but you just get... You get to a place in, in a space like mentally where you just feel like, 
well, no, I give up. That's it. You know, that, that that's the last straw. Do you, do you know what I, what I like? I don't know what, I don't remember how old I was. I when get I, knocked down. You, get <laughs> you gotta up get again. back up, man. <laughs> I made this switch where not only was I okay with failure, but I embraced it so much that I, I almost seeked it out. And not that I would like approach something and say like, hey, I'm going to try and fail at this, but I was so comfortable and okay with it. And the way I looked at it was, I know the answer now. You know, if I failed at it, the answer is no now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know, I know what not to do. Yeah, yeah. I know. Try something else. Right. Yeah. I know. Not, I know that's. Not, I thought that was the yeah, right it's answer. Called learning. I put my. I put everything I had into it. I busted my ass towards it. I wanted it to win. I wanted it to succeed. I failed. But guess what? I now know that that is not the path to success for whatever that was that I was trying to do. So now it's technically mm. yeah. a success. What's, what are some of the hardest lessons you guys have had to learn? Like, hardest failures? Yeah. Like, have you? Well, what I mean by that is, have you ever had to learn a lesson like? Two or three times before you're like, okay, I get it. Fuck, I keep making that same. Has anything like that ever happened to you? Oh, I'm sure it has. I'm trying to think of a, yeah. like an example for you. I think just yeah, like swinging the bat and like going pursuing ideas, and um, you know, you just learn a lot from from going all in on something, and then like if it if it turns into something completely different than that, and it's all about how you respond to it. So sometimes you'll nail it, but you'll never nail it like right out of the park the very first time. So it's hard for me to look at things initially as a failure, as, as like you guys are saying, like it's a teaching moment, but uh, there's there's the point where it doesn't, it doesn't make sense anymore to keep pursuing it. Mm. And so that's the line you have to find. Here's a lesson I've learned. Uh, I had to learn twice, um, and then I finally learned it. I'm a very, uh, I have an old school mentality towards business in the sense that, you know, when I make a deal with someone or if I say something to someone, uh, it's, I can't, I, I'm not going to go against what I said. Even if there's nobody in the room, it's just me and another person. Well, your word is your bond, right? My, yeah, like, mm -hmm. like so much so that it would, uh, it would be very painful and destructive for me to even go against my own word. Like, even if I said something that later I regretted, I'd be like, well, I said it. So now I'm going to stick to it. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that was that I <coughs> assumed or felt like the other side was that same way. Mm -hmm. And that was a painful lesson I've had to learn a couple times where I got to the point where if I did a business deal with someone and it's almost like, here's the deal. Like, you know, when you, you have to, like, let's say we make a deal with each other and we're like, okay, we're going to do this business. We're going to split this 50, 50 and we all shake hands and I got lots of integrity pulling out that piece of paper, that contract, and then signing it, to me, felt like an assault on my integrity because it's almost like, an, like a, it's almost offensive. Like, what do you mean sign that? Of course, you, you know, I'm not going to break my bond, right? Like, not that I, I consciously thought that, but subconsciously, it just felt weird. And it only felt weird because I know how I am and I'm extremely like, I'm going to fucking stick to my word. Yeah. But I had to learn that lesson a couple times where the other person all of a sudden comes up with something different and then, you know, we go back and forth and I'm like, oh shit, like I never, I should have had them sign something. And I know this is like modern business, right? People are like, you're an idiot. Of course they have to sign something. But I had to learn that. And so I did that with somebody. I actually went into a potential business venture with a friend and we went into it together. And I, you know, as much as I trusted them and as much integrity as I had, I said, you know what? I don't want to have to learn this lesson again the, the hard way. Mm. So I actually wrote out a contract and I had them sign it, and I saved that contract. And wouldn't you fucking know it? Six months later, this person tried to back out and owed me like $6,000. And that contract, luckily I brought that out, and they still tried to go against it, and we had to go to small claims court. And I got my $6,000 you know, that they owed me. Yeah. But, uh, man, that, that's a, that was a lesson I've had to learn a couple times I before, actually. I yeah, would. I was just thinking I I added a really vague answer, so I wanted to be a little more specific uh, to you know like what we actually talked to to Ben about when we were in Tampa um, to the fact that like he he couldn't um, once you start something it's like you can't quit like that goes against mm -hmm. the grain for you right mm -hmm. and so like that that being a driving mechanism for me too and I really identified with that. Um, that's been something that has been super challenging when it comes to allowing something to die, you know, allowing mm -hmm. a pursuit to die. And what does that even look like? Cause I don't, I didn't even know what that looked like. I sat the bench my junior year, I think for baseball, because I didn't make any of the practices in spring, uh, where this, this coach valued it. And I sat 
and went through the entire season sitting the bench and been miserable and fucking hated it and all that just because I don't quit. Like that was like, like everything like revolves around not quitting something that I said I was doing, uh, which gave me no out. Right. And when, when to benefit me sometimes, like even more and like my family and people around me would be to, you know, like let one part, like let this pursuit die, feed more into this pursuit. Right. So that's something that that's highlights really hard for me. That highlights your character because you're, you, you believe so much in integrity that you wouldn't even like, it's your word to yourself almost. Right. And you yeah. feel like, I'm not going against what I said to me. Right. You know, to my own self, yeah. which I, I think failure arguably could be the greatest teacher ever. I think it's the only teacher. I, I really do. I don't, well, I don't, I don't, there's I mean, a lot of teachers at universities and stuff like that. So <laughs> I, mean, so. I mean, literally though, if Mr. You, I, failure? I think, Jesus was I, a teacher. I think that, um, you know, the the more you get this and you embrace this, and again, like that's why I meant by like I would seek it out is because nothing will teach you more than pursuing something, whether it be a goal or a business plan or a relationship or an idea, and then failing at it. Nothing will teach you more than that. Nothing. Yeah. Because sometimes I feel like we're we're blinded by our own ego, our own insecurities, our own like distractions i feel like so many times that you can you have a goal or an idea that you want and you and you you fall so much in love with it that you marry it without having any real perspective and sometimes you need a big fucking slap in the face called failure to wake you up and go like no dude you weren't really looking at that correctly Mm -hmm. you didn't think about this you didn't think about that you forgot about this you didn't plan for that and then there there's your lesson right there you know so I think where people make the mistake is when they hit the is the the people that fail and then instantly want to put blame on everybody else. Yeah, they never learn shit about themselves, and yeah. so then that then failure is is nothing but a poor bad habit for that person. But I think if you truly look at every failure as a, an incredible teaching opportunity, then fuck, bring them on, man, bring them on, because I just that's you're going to grow faster that way. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right, go to your app uh, application in your phone and get the Mind Pump app. You can actually search all of our episodes by keyword. So if you want to look up fat loss, muscle building, you want to look up glute training, MAPS anabolic, whatever, put in the search function. It'll show you which episodes we've talked about that particular topic all about. It's a free app, so go get it. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.